Good morning. This morning we are on a bean mission. Okie dokie, in this jumbled mess, ignoring these ones, which are some bought French beans. We just shh about that. <laughs> but in this tangled mess here is a jumble of runner beans, Greek gigantes, Bolotis. There's also a pot of Jinxy beans and a pot of Lazy Housewife beans. Those two, the Jinxie and the Lazy Housewife, are not going to be going up arches. They're going to be kept separate. I'm not planting them out today and they're going to be going up uh, separate teepees. But I'm going to get these into order because they've all got a bit jumbled and a bit tangled as I've been moving them around, uh, escaping the slugs. But I'm going to get them sorted into their groups and then get them in under the main arches. So the two beans which are for drying, which are the Greek Gigantes and the Bolotis, are going to go up uh, the first two arches. And then the runner beans, which I seem to have a lot more of than the others, are going to go up the first arch. So when you come down the main drag, they're just going to absolutely cover that. And I'm really looking forward to that because this year I've gone for a variety which is called Scarlet Empire, which is a relation of the classic Scarlet Emperor. And uh, they've got those the beautiful classic allotment flower, those really, really fluorescent orange runner bean flowers. And I'm so looking forward to having an arch full of them. So beans are pretty thirsty and pretty hungry. They like quite a lot of water retention in the soil. And what with us having such dry soil here and sandy soil, so it just can't hold on to that moisture. What I'm gonna do is dig a hole for each of these beans. There's two beans in each pot, roughly. Uh, I think one of them's got three and I think a couple of them have only got one, but the idea was it was gonna be two in each pot. And I'm gonna dig quite a nice big hole for each one, fill the bottom of it with well rotted leaf mold so it's one year leaf mold rather than the two year which is where it becomes really fine like seed sowing compost so it's still got a bit of body to it that's going to go in the bottom of the hole with a load of grow more and i'm going to fill those holes up with water so that that really really penetrates the soil once i've got them in and then watered them in again i'm going to cover the whole lot with mulch and try and just hold on to as much of that moisture as i possibly possibly can
The next two arches are for the Bellottis and the Greek Gigantes. Now I didn't have perfect germination on these. I planted enough to do the whole arch and I'd say about two thirds of them have come up. Nowhere near as bad as the French bean scenario, but not complete germination, which is rare because I often find like as many beans as you plant is as many beans as you end up getting unless you get slug damage. But rather than combining them onto the one arch, I'm gonna keep them separate and uh, use the space on the ends of the arches for something else. That's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, I quite like to keep them separate and the Greek Gigantes are much more domineering than the Bellottis and I don't want them to just completely swamp them. But also because these are both beans for drying and I'm gonna leave the pods on there until they're paper dry. Or while they're growing, the Bellottis and the Greek Gigantes look completely different because not only their shape and size is different, but one of them is green with red speckles and one of them is more like a tough runner bean, so quite coarse pod. However, when they start drying out and they both go paper dry, it makes it much more difficult. So I'm just gonna keep them completely separate. That is the uh, runners, the Bellottis and the Greek Gigantes in. Marvellous. Okie dokie, I have got some basil that needs to be planted out into the polytunnel, uh, but it's the Thai basil. I don't know if you remember, I had a load of trouble right at the beginning with my uh, basil because I let it dry out. <laughs> So it all germinated and then it was on the top shelf, let it dry out anyway. So my Thai basil survived it because that's so much tougher. So I'm going to get that into the polytunnel. But my second sowing of the normal basil, so this is the standard green basil and then this is a purple one, but like proper like Italian basil, uh, they are not ready to go out yet. So I'm going to plant my Thai basil into two patches, leaving loads of room for when they're ready to go in. Notice my attempt at leaving room and planning ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've learned a lesson from the lettuces. Whew. So these little seedlings are actually really quite tightly packed in this pot. I put quite a lot in <laughs> and they seem to have had really, really good germination. And they've been in here quite a long time. So they've got a really good root system, but they are really quite entangled with each other. And rather than planting them in clumps like I'm going to with the basil. So the basil is going to come out of its cell tray and be planted as individual cells. This Thai basil, I find it's really, really worth putting it out in as individual plants. Last year I had six, it might have been eight to be honest, but I just had the eight plants and they formed really fantastic, strong plants that kept us going all the way up until November. So I'm gonna play the same game this year. <laughs> Have a bit of a nosy at how the carrot and coriander is going. 
looking pretty good. I mean, the coriander is much bigger than the carrot foliage, obviously. So I'm gonna snip a bit of this off for use, hopefully give the carrots a little bit more light. Loads of new growth coming underneath. I'll just take a couple of these big ones on this side. Good morning. Well, yesterday, having done uh, bean extravaganza up the main arches, I thought I had myself fairly sorted on the uh, French bean front because you know none of my French beans germinated. I had three varieties growing, a green one which was Cobra, I had a red one which was Violetto I think and um, Necker Gold. So that's uh, red, yellow and green. Uh, French beans, not a single one germinated or like I think maybe two germinated got slugged immediately. Anyway it was a complete fail and I was thinking that it might have had something to do with the really hot summer conditions we had that storing bean seeds really didn't like it. I think I might have had some of them in the shed uh, but even the room that I keep them at home in that office you know where I've got all those drawers actually that room gets so hot. I thought basically that the seed was just completely redundant and um, and I'd kind of accepted my fate for uh, the French bean season and in fact I got out and bought <laughs> bought some starters which was just a plain green French bean from um, they were doing a plant sale actually at uh, Lotman's, not my site, but some. Anyway, I'm rambling. Basically, um, I now have too many French beans <laughs> because after none of them germinating, we decided to just be like, well, okay, are we just going to throw the seed away or should we have one last ditch attempt? And so mum just filled up some of those little trays. In fact, I'll just get them for you. Mum filled up some of these trays just with a bit of compost and we basically put all of the beans that were left in those packets of seed in there uh, just to see if anything was going to germinate and we might get a couple of them. Well, absolutely all of them have germinated. So I've now got three trays packed with beans. But what that does mean is that it was something um, environmental or specific or even user error as to why none of them germinated because all of these ones seem absolutely fine. It's not just this. I mean, this is full germination. The other two trays are exactly the same. So there was just something wrong in that first attempt. But anyway, what it does mean is that I am back to having red beans or purple beans, yellow beans and green beans. Two types of green beans now. <laughs> Luckily, it's actually gonna work out okay because I've got those four arches along the edge, which are normally my French bean arches. And I normally have three varieties of French bean and I stick something else Sorry. something else that's climbing on the fourth one uh, this year it was going to be a chocha but actually because I had some dodgy bean germination with the rest of them namely the uh, Greek Gigantes and the Bellotti plenty of um, runner beans but the Bellottis and the Greeks so I've only got sort of half the double arches of both of those I've kept them on separate arches just means I've got two extra places so I'm going to put my chocha and my um, tromboncinos on those arches which mean I've got a full four arches for my French beans. Excellent! So it's much less of a French bean disaster year than I thought it was going to be, which is excellent. Excellent. But what I'm going to do today is plant out my winter squash because uh, yesterday mum left the hose running. I'm going to put them on the bed that I was originally going to put the tomatoes in, the outdoor tomatoes, um, that big bed you know that doesn't fit any of our cages but the pumpkins are not going to need to be caged or netted or anything like that so I'm going to put them in there. It's a nice big space for them to ramble around. I have three varieties of winter squash. Um, they are Crown Prince, Marina di Chioggia and Ichikokuri. Fab. I've also got one butternut squash. I don't know why I'm squashing this into my face. I'm sorry. Um, I've got one butternut squash to go in and my own ones are about this size. Hold on. About this sort of size ready to go in. Who's this? This is a Marina de Ch, as I've written. Um, but I've just been given an extra crown prince off uh, Girl Down the Road and hers is a whopper. So mine are looking very insignificant compared to hers, but still beautiful. Let's get them in the ground. <laughs> okay. 
so we can stick over the sweet corn. I mean, the thing with pumpkins and winter squash is that you can basically give them an infinite amount of space and it's never going to be enough because the more space they've got, like the bigger they grow. One advantage of being able to plant them in this end bed, although I've planted them relatively close together, this bed is my largest bed, so I think I can get away with the eight. And they're not going to be overflowing onto any of the other beds and squashing out other crops. I've got a fence going along the back that they can crawl along. I've got the fruit cage to the side that they can climb up if they want to. We can tie them up there. So really, although their bum space is quite limited in this bed, they're kind of they can they can branch out into the world beyond this bed. So I think this is as much space as I had to give them and uh, they've got the best I can do. Well, fingers crossed for some excellent pumpkins because last year we had a couple of good ijikukuri uh, but the marina de chogga just didn't do anything and the crown prince we planted right on the edge of the plot because we ran out of space they didn't have enough sunshine so fingers crossed this is going to be excellent Whew, it's hot and i'm going out this evening gotta do something about that hey lily floof i know i'm going out i've got to sort my hands out haven't i i have because i'm covered in mud as per usual, as per usual, pussy cat. Yeah. Chaps, we are heading into the heart of Albertopolis. This is one of my favourite areas of London. It's now known as South Kensington, <laughs> but it was originally sort of known as Albertopolis because it was bought by Prince Albert with the profit that was made from the Great Exhibition, which was what, 1851, I think, 1851. Anyway, he bought this whole area with the profits from that and turned it into, well, Okay, I've got a list here of uh, the bits and pieces that are in this very, very tightly packed bit of London. And here we go. Imperial College, which is huge. The Natural History Museum. The Royal Albert Hall. The Royal College of Art. That's where we're going. The Royal College of Music. The Royal Geographical Society. The Royal Institute of Navigation. The Science Museum. The Victoria and Albert Museum. And the Albert Memorial. And then the things which have recently sort of merged but were originally cited here. We've got the Faculty of Engineering, which was like its own little college. The Geological Museum, the Royal College of Science, 
the Royal College of Mining, the Royal College of Organists, the Royal College of Naval Architecture, the Royal School of Needlework and the Imperial Institute. I mean, they pack a lot into this little patch. <laughs> but like I said, we are going to the Royal College of Art, which is a place that I spent a good number of years. Firstly, as a student, because I did my master's there, and then I was employed there for quite a long time. In fact, I was employed there during the time that I was doing these vlogs. So it was up until fairly recently. And uh, we are going up to the art bar, which is the old student union bar. And we're meeting up with some girls that I did my masters with, all of whom you have met before. We all went to Ireland together and we went to Lauren's wedding together. So you know them well. And uh, it's a beautiful bar right on the rooftop of the oh, lower right, section totally of the college, different. overlooking the Royal Albert Hall. So you can't really get better than that on a beautiful summer's evening. So I'm just going to sit here and enjoy my pint and I will see you back at the allotment tomorrow. It is a beautiful day. Uh, kids are out at the moment on their morning break and so it's very noisy. <laughs> but as much as I would love to stay on this swing seat and just look at the sunshine, we are in the midst of a planting out marathon at the moment. Well, I have been quite busy since I left you on the swing seat contemplating what I was going to do next, but we have been having some unexpected technical difficulties this morning, chaps. <laughs> So I decided while I was sitting on the swing seat that uh, the first thing I wanted to do was plant out my nipper leaks that were in the greenhouse. Uh, so I chatted away very merrily to you in the greenhouse about the leaks and about the variety and uh, and I have just played back the footage to check what I was saying, you know, because normally I just ramble on about nonsense. I know this is what it sounds like. This is what it sounds like. Oh, so because they really need him. Of the nipper leaks, now these are a type of leak that you pick really small, so you don't need protection from the allium leaf miner because they're just not in the ground long enough. So I did actually get on with doing the leaks, but then we had further technical difficulties. I'm so sorry about this incredibly unprofessional operation that we've been running this morning. Uh, I think there must be a glitch. There is a glitch on my phone, which is not excellent, but we're going to persevere. We're going to persevere. So anyway, I'm just covering uh, what I did next. <laughs> which was to show you the area where I'm planting them, which is here where we had the Lucullus chard. And I needed to dig all of this out. Um, at this point, I'm showing you the leaks, but my voice is still like Barry White. So <laughs> yeah, this is what I needed to clear. So I diligently went, set up the camera so that I could film me clearing this bed. And it went about as well as the chat in the greenhouse. That is extremely annoying. I've just fought absolute tooth and nail to clear that um, child out of the way. And uh, my camera wasn't running. 
let me show you the size of these roots so basically that bit of ground hasn't been watered for a while because we were not um, like looking after that child it was finished and so uh, our soil does the whole it dries out turns to concrete thing and some of the roots on this chard are whoppers this is what i got out of the ground but like these roots are huge and i had to resort to the fork and i've been fighting away i'm talking to the camera and uh, i've just gone round to uh, turn the camera off and it wasn't running so that is extremely annoying <laughs> Problems with filming on your phone is that there's no indicator to say it's actually recording. Uh, but anyway, I've got them out. We now have a clear bed. I've left the little violet in there and I'm going to give it a really good soak because at the moment it is like, it's like a combo dust and concrete. So while we're waiting for the water to absorb into that bed so they've got at least a chance of survival, let's have a look at some of the flowers because everything's looking gorgeous at the moment. Look at this, this is the uh, purple sage that we've got, looking stunning. The chives are out, actually the chives are just about to be over. Red poppies are out all over the place at the moment, they just don't last any time, do they? Look. The love in the mist is all coming out, looking gorgeous. And extra exciting sweet peas are coming out now. This was just a mixed variety bag, so I wasn't entirely sure what was going to come out, but we have got some beauties and the smell while I'm crouched here is just unbelievable. The lichnus is all in flower, looking beautiful. We've got more love in the mist at the back there. These are more sweet peas, so out of the same mix, just a different setup. Look at that one, really pale. It's so beautiful. The first water lily is out in the pond. You can see how little rain we've got. The pond has sunk right down. The oxide daisies are billowing in the wind, looking stunning. The California poppies are just covered in bees at the moment. Hey, little chap. Yep. <laughs> the bee's so heavy, he's just pulling the flower right over. Some of the linaria, the toad flax is coming out, which is super exciting. We still have one iris growing around in the background. Can you see we've got red currants under there? This is the sacrificial bush for the birds. So that's been full of little chaps. And I tell you what, these foxgloves are stunning. They are completely white. Normally they've got little freckles in them and stuff, but these are just completely white and they are taller than me. Okay, let's get back to the leeks. They should have had enough time to soak now. So like I was trying to explain to you when I was Barry Whiting in the greenhouse, um, these are a specific variety of leek called nipper that you pick when they're very young so they're like pencil leeks rather than letting them to get to really big fat full size they're just like an intermediate leek like somewhere between a spring onion and a proper full-blown leek. So if I was planting these out as leeks I'd be making the traditional really deep hole and filling that up with water and then placing each individual leek in there and they would be buried really quite deep. They'd also be slightly bigger than these ones are going in the ground and I'd be giving them a lot of space. These leeks are not in the same sort of ilk as say a mussel bra or something like that. So what I'm doing is just laying them out in rows basically and giving them just enough space that they can get to sort of maybe finger thickness. Some of them I'll be pulling out when they're much smaller and using them more like a spring onion. So like a full leek in a stir fry type scenario and the rest of them we will leave to get fat finger thickness. And uh, that is this variety. There's a couple of advantages of this. So they have a very, where I say they're halfway between a spring onion and a leek, they've definitely got the flavour of a leek rather than a spring onion. But where in the past we've had a lot of trouble, like I've said so many times before, with white rot and allium leaf miner and all these problems with growing alliums, the nipper leeks were the one that was kind of a bit of a cheat. So we got the flavour of the leek, but we didn't have any of the problems of the allium leaf miner because they're in the ground for such a short amount of time. Even if the allium leaf miner does actually attack, they don't have time to mature. So you don't have grubs in your leeks. And yeah, it was just a bit of a cheat. But now we've got past that point and we can grow proper size leeks. Actually, the nipper was such a lovely variety that we've just kind of stuck with it, growing alongside the full size leeks.
they're in at least the leaks are in which is you know tick um uh, but while I was in the greenhouse, I was actually chatting away to you merrily also about my chickpeas. Second succession sign. And I think I'm probably just going to go back in there and re-record that bit because I'm quite excited about the chickpeas. So let's, um, let's migrate to the greenhouse. Let's hope this is more successful. <laughs> yeah, so chickpeas, they're looking wonderful. Look at them. I'm so pleased that uh, I was roundly advised to plant more uh, because of those first 10, I think I got six up and now I've got about 17 to go in, which I'm very pleased about. Don't get me wrong. I know I'm not going to be storing enough chickpeas from 17 plants to kind of feed me for the year, but I'm just really excited about the prospect of fresh chickpeas. I've never eaten fresh chickpeas before. They've always been dried. So exciting little chaps. Haven't decided where I'm going to put them in yet. Um, but I'm going to really try hard to harden these ones off a bit better than I have some of the other things this year because it has been really, really good temperatures in here, like steady temperatures. I mean, like it hasn't been falling too much at night. And um, so I want to harden these off because I'd be so sad if I lost them because they're so pretty. Yeah, so 17 chickpeas. Wonderful. And what else was I saying in here when I was trying to tell you about my leeks? Oh, yeah. Uh, the... Uh, French beans that I said had all come up. Have a look how quickly they've grown. So what was that two days ago I was saying that? Look at the state of them now. Look at the size of them now in two days. <laughs> They're gonna have to go out soon. Actually, so while we're in here, let me just show you. These are those um, aubergines that I got grafted, super cheap. Aren't they looking fantastic? They look so strong. Although, what the hell? Oh my God. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to be back in here with the soapy water very shortly and washing them off. Luckily, I think I've caught that infestation. But i tell you what else is looking really good are the fantastic ones that Johanna gave me. I'm going to pop them up either today or tomorrow, depending on how much time I've got. But yeah, her aubergines just look fantastic compared to mine that are over here and are about a fifth of the size. So well done, Johanna. Also, the peppers that I potted up, look, we actually have a pepper very exciting they are just uh, bog standard bell boy you know capsicum bell peppers um but yeah jolly times Woo! right what else am i going to do today mainly it's watering to be honest um the poor tomatoes in the polytunnel when i got up here this morning and i opened them up uh they were looking very very hot so i put the watering system on just attached the hose not through the water butt and uh oh god they're practicing romeo and juliet again actually to be fair it's too hot in here i've got to get out of here another quick update we picked the last of the asparagus last week and you see how quickly it grows like this is super tall oh now let me see if i can show you the asparagus beetles they're all mating making more asparagus beetles do you see them? They're an incredible colour. Can you see him? Oh, he's running away from me. Come on, Chapo. What about that guy over there? Can you see him? They are like red with a black and white dotty back, almost like checkered. And then those little things here, can you see on there? That's their eggs. So yeah, they're not the best and particularly not when they're all mating and things. But if you have asparagus, you generally have asparagus beetles. So, oh look at that, we've got making making babies and, and eggs on the other side. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm just going to nip in here and show you, but the um, some of these tomatoes are looking really strong. Some of them, look at this one, that has really, really suffered. I mean, it got very hot in here, very hot. I have put some of my small peppers in here, uh, which is where I planted the... Um, <laughs> can't remember Thai basil around the base of them and we have some parsley on the go it's such a gorgeous day it's a gorgeous day oh mum's shown up you have arrived yep she's found some uh, coconut koi so she's going to put it in our bird's nest resource box 
very nice. Okay, something we are gonna do now, now mum's shown up, is uh, tip out another one of the greenhouse potato buckets. So you remember last time, they're all red duke in there, we had the three pots. We tried one about, it would have been about four weeks ago, I reckon. It clearly wasn't ready, but we were just impatient and we really wanted to have a go at it. I don't know what that noise is, I'm really sorry. We're just gonna have to go through it. Uh, but we're gonna tip out another because it's gonna be barbecue tonight because it's, you know, that kind of weather. And we think it's gonna have to be potatoes and maybe even some broad beans. Excited about tipping out some potatoes? Um, yeah, should we go and get the wheelbarrow? Into the um, into the one we have to see it, hey. with that bearing in mind there was only the one potato in there and it was just a bit of a gamble it's pretty good it wasn't taking up any space that we would have been using for anything else it's just a bit of a gamble shove them in the greenhouse and see what we get early potatoes and I'm really happy about it how many have we got 16 it's not bad and actually that is about double what we got out of the last one so having left them in there for an extra month goody goody gumdrops okay i'm gonna go and have a look at the broad beans and see if there's any of those that we can take because like fresh straight out of the ground potatoes and fresh straight out of the pod broad beans is i mean it's just heaven isn't it i definitely think some of these will be able to come off i mean these guys are all this is the sort of majority size of them they're too small but look down here these are big and you can feel them in there like that one. Whoa, yeah. Right, I reckon we'll get a couple of them. It's not gonna be a whopping feed, but it's a good start. Well, this is starting to really pee me off because uh, it didn't record that either, me picking the beans. Um, so you're just gonna have to believe me. <laughs> but yeah, some of these actually look quite a good size. I promise, like next week, guys, I'm gonna do so. I'm gonna go to the Apple store and be like, what the F is wrong with my phone? I know they're going to tell me, oh, you need a new phone. It's too old. <laughs> but, you know, it's not right. It's not right. Anyway, broad beans and potatoes. Apart from the, you know, whole thing of recording it not working, I'm pretty happy with these. I love the smell of broad bean pods. I'm actually not going to be up here for that much longer, you know. I think I'm going to uh, head home, probably have a barbecue and a glass of wine in the back garden. <laughs> is absolutely lovely.
good morning again we did come home and have a barbecue and a glass of wine in the garden last night and then the skies absolutely opened and we had thunderstorms which was incredible because it has been so hot um, and the raindrops were really huge you know like proper plinkety plonkety raindrops oh it was bliss but anyway it is morning again now <laughs> and uh, it's hot but now it's not just hot it's hot and steamy it's like being in a sauna it's gonna be 28 again today First things first, I just want to apologise for the technical difficulties of this week's video. It was just just one of those, it just kept going wrong. There was obviously some sort of glitch on my phone and I have like updated the software and um, you know just tried to restart it and I've reloaded um, some bits and pieces on there which were obviously out of date. So hopefully next week that is not going to be an issue again. But I'm going to finish this video here. <laughs> next week We've got a lot of feeding and watering and like looking after plants to do. So I've got the majority of things planted out now. I've still got quite a few bits and pieces that I need to sow for the next lot. I've got to sow some more beetroot, I've got to sow some more carrots, I've got to sow uh, turnips, little bits and pieces like that. I've got to get those in and uh, I've got to find a bed to put the chickpeas in, which is very exciting. Um, but yeah, next week it's going to be a lot of like tomato care. I've got to finish off um, sorting out that watering system so that it works off the water butt which is also to do with feeding so I'm going to do quite a lot of that kind of thing next week I've got seaweed feed and comfrey feed and looking at what they're good for we are set for thunderstorms again this afternoon so uh, I'm going to whiz up to the allotment now as soon as I've got this video up uh, I'm going to whiz up to the allotment now and uh, get some things sorted you know I put the cloches well not cloches but the EnviroMesh over those courgettes well, I don't think it's done them a lot of good actually, they're looking really sad, whereas the winter squash that I put out with no protection seems to be much happier. So I'm going to whip that off, um, I think it might just be getting too hot under there. Even though like the breeze does go through, I think it's just too hot. Uh, what else have we got to do? Hopefully going to get some basil out, um, try and work out what I'm doing with all those other new French beans that I didn't think I had. Yeah, guys, all go. I can't believe this week has just been bam, bam, bam. I had so many things I intended to do this week and I've got barely any of them done. So they're all being shunted into next week. Anyway, chaps, it's not really a cheers. Didn't get to film a cheers last night because, you know, suddenly started absolutely chucking it down and it was so joyful. We were just like just <laughs> well over excited about the rain and I forgot to film it, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, I'm going to say cheers with my cup of coffee to the most incredible weather that we're having. Cheers to the Monday Clubbers who are just unbelievable as always and cheers to everybody else.